Has the market changed its mind about what the Fed may do next? We have got to get inflation behind us. I wish there were a painless way to do that. There isn't. Think of that number, and maybe more importantly, what do you think the Fed's going to do? And therefore, what your equity is going to do? I've been saying over and over again to my colleagues here that he wants your portfolio down so that you won't be able to spend as much. Hello, and uh, welcome to Financial Stockholm. Today is Friday, October 28th, uh, 2022. And uh, these are our thoughts about the market and what the news is that we're seeing within the market. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. And um, so uh, the, uh, the Swedish press, which is in a bit of a soul searching mood right now, despite the uh, heavy flow of earnings, uh, is writing about uh, things such as the war in Ukraine is uh, getting really bad. Um, the power centers are being shut down. Uh, so people are suffering. And uh, they even include how people in uh, Belarus are suffering as a result of the war in Ukraine. Uh, and, and so really, we're no closer to any sort of peace talks as we see that we're shipping weapons, as are other NATO uh, uh, countries. Germany has figured out a way to get around and uh, send weapons. Uh, France is uh, discussing some of the same topics about the uh, tragedies of the war and uh, the suffering but that uh, the, the continued war has to go on. So Russia continues with its uh, scorched earth policy, uh, blows up the power stations as they leave or as they're retreating and uh, leaves the Ukrainians to potentially freeze. Now, um, we do have a lot of gas in Europe because we've had uh, what some would consider unusually mild, or if you look at it over a 200 year period, somewhat uh, regular mild uh, temperature. Uh, right now, in parts of the region where they're being attacked, uh, you see temperature of around 12, 13 Celsius, very similar to what we have here in uh, places like Stockholm and Kalmar. Uh, and so it's not a bad winter yet. And let's hope it doesn't turn into a bad winter because people will freeze and uh, more people die from cold than from warm. So this is uh, something, a, a tragedy I hope will be averted. And I hope uh, the ESG warriors who would want to see a cleaner planet would be in agreement and move forward toward pushing uh, for peace talks and uh, where you see some sort of negotiation, uh, you know, where the, the war is resolved rather quickly. Um, but, uh, but we can feel safe in Sweden because the, uh, the King Cobra that had escaped in Skanska or Skansen has been captured or will be captured. So uh, the potential deaths to tourists uh, in Skansen at this time of year is dramatically reduced. And uh, there's nothing about any shootings today in the press. Uh, we're at the magic number, unfortunately, a terrible number of 55, uh, where people have been shot and killed in Sweden. And so we're at a record level. Uh, so the focus is on the Swedish society. And uh, there's an interesting article discussing US politics and what's happening in places like Oregon. And if the Swedish uh, government continues or we want to continue to degrade the society as a potential of what could happen. Ironically, there's also an article in the Wall Street Journal talking about the politics, purely the politics, and uh, this side versus that side. But uh, the Swedish press also has an article featuring a chef and what he likes and how he's very green and ecological. And uh, his favorite food place is Oregon because of the food trucks. Now, if he reads the other article written by his paper, he'll see that it's uh, maybe not so good to buy food uh, from a food truck in Oregon or maybe maybe go to a different place other than Portland to get your food. Uh, but that's that's a different story. So uh, in the Swedish industries, uh, we, we do see reports coming in. We see uh, paper companies. Uh, we see uh, continued on the industrials, in particular Electrolux, which is going to go through a downsizing program. So bottom line improvement. They're operating in uh, 33 different countries and something like 60% plus, around 67% are in Europe. Uh, uh, around 18%, so under 20% are operating in the US of their employees. And they're, they're announcing that they're going to be firing 4,000 people, 4,000 plus people from their staff. Uh, so most of the effect I would assume uh, would be felt here in Europe, unless they go for designers and eliminating people that uh, are not creating good products or that they feel are underperforming. So, um, that, uh, that will be kind of the focus here in Sweden. It looks like uh, apparently the shares were trading up after the announcement. So the bottom line improvements would be seen as positive. 
and we'll see how uh, this is interpreted by the market for the rest of the time. Another issue discussed is our energy policy. And then on Monday, we should have an announcement or there is an expected announcement about the high electricity cost as this was part of the coalition campaign uh, in their uh, uh, campaigning before the election. So regions three and four are scheduled or would look to be scheduled to get rebates back from the governments for the higher than expected electricity costs that they've experienced. And uh, this may be something like 55 billion, I think, uh, Swedish kroner. Uh, we'll see how much it is and we'll see what the actual effect will be. But uh, that is something that uh, will probably come out on Monday. Uh, further discussion of it. And so in today's paper, we do have an article where it's uh, written with Anna Borg, who is the CEO of Vattenfall or has been the CEO of Vattenfall. We'll see how that goes forward because the Tito Alptolet or the Tito Agreement uh, has the position to put in a supervisory board or that would be one of the things they'd like to do. And uh, while Vattenfall had started a survey in July uh, or June of this year, to undertake the study of SMRs at the ring hole one and two, uh, the Anna Borg clearly states, and, and this, is, this is really important for many people to realize, is that before a nuclear power plant could be up and running uh, or nuclear power could be restored to these places where they shut down would be 2030. And so with 2030, this is, this is what's key. It, it will take six years roughly uh, or longer it took uh, Finland 15 years to finalize their most recent reactor uh, before you have production up and running and coming out of them. Uh, and, and I think that's important for people to understand. What she's focusing on, on is windmills. Now windmills are currently around something like 15% of power. And if you go across the board throughout Europe or even China, uh, you're looking at maybe 10 to 15%. If you look at what happened in Texas or in California, they're looking at eight to 15% and at different times of the year. Now, it is always going to be a, uh, a uh, reliability question versus intermittent performance. And so with that, you have a scenario that you will have supply and then you will have demand. The question is, will the supply be able to meet the demand? The wind's not blowing, you don't have the uh, supply when you have the higher demand. And this is an interesting issue because if you're a power company and you're producing and you're selling on long-term values, you set the price. But uh, if you're a power company and you're selling it on a intermittent level, well, then you would sell it on an intermittent level because your production is coming intermittently. So it gives you greater price variability and flexibility, which we've seen here in Sweden when the pricing went through the roof because the supply wasn't high enough. And you've seen similar scenarios in Germany. And if you look at what happened in France, where they went from a net exporter to a net importer, uh, and you see the, uh, uh, the effect of the cost. Um, but if you, if you look at the inflation pricing and the effect that we've seen in inflation here, we're close to 11% in Sweden, and France is close to 6.2, 6.4% for their increases. Now, remember, they have the most nuclear reactors in uh, Europe. OK, and if you look at the uh, the amount of reactors we have, I've provided in the uh, the notes, um, I give you a simple example of what we have in Sweden, Finland. Uh, you look at places like Belgium, uh, France and uh, to get up to 77. And if you look at the amount of reactors that are working in China and India, manufacturing hubs where they need reliability of power to produce, they have 77 plants. Now you could argue about the economy of China being roughly, uh, you know, the, the greatest uh, or largest economy in the world, and you could say that India, with roughly the same population, has an economy the size of Texas. Well, what would get them from that uh, size uh, population to that size economy of China? Well, reliable power, and uh, so they are building out the uh, power structure. They are currently increasing the coal. Uh, by about 25 to 33%, that's going to be projected into their budget. And um, that will be for the consumption and production needs. And you see the same things in China where, yes, they are increasing their power uh, build out and they're building it out. Uh, they are building it out on wind power and solar, but they're building it out on reliable power production. So both nuclear and coal, they do look to phase out the coal, 
but those are the company, uh, the coal plants that are least uh, efficient. You always want to increase with efficiency. So, and then once you already have the power grid in place, well, then maybe they can build out with uh, nuclear there as well. And the advantage to the nuclear is the flexibility if you're doing uh, high pressure steam or if you're doing uh, something where you can use the high pressure steam and create hydrogen, or if you're only creating electricity, you know, you have a variability of structure there with the nuclear power. So um, these build outs uh, would, and in an SMR would be able to be put in place where you have an existing coal. And then if you're gonna convert the coal like we're doing in Europe to say a hydrogen production, uh, and again, you can go into Botten Falls uh, reports and you can read about this and some of the attempts that we're looking to do or Botten Falls is looking to do in Amsterdam or excuse me, in, in Holland and uh, in Germany. And these are on converted uh, plants, either from natural gas or coal. Uh, you would get a better picture of this. But the key is they're building out reliable power sources in a time when you have the need for the increased power reliability. So uh, forgetting about the issue of whether windmills and solar are really that green, um, it's really gonna come down to reliability. And uh, so even when Anna Borg is talking about increasing windmills and she's talking about the Tito Avtal, uh, which is not so favorable to windmills, she's talking about an immediate production and a great way to increase your revenue because of the greater demand causing the spike in prices. So um, that, that's just food for thought, um, but, uh, and we'll try to get an expert on to discuss this. But one of the keys here for Sweden will be the grid and how the grid build out will continue. That's been one of the complaints and why in the north of Sweden, we have lower pricing as we do here in Sweden and in the Southern part uh, and how to make the grid more effective and uh, equalized. So, um, that would be kind of the focus from today. We also have a focus on the real estate markets and uh, potential disposal of assets from these more leveraged real estate companies. Uh, those are gaining a lot of press. Uh, and, then, and then of course, um, what would Halloween weekend be without a lot of uh, conspiracy? So we have uh, Tesla uh, getting a DOJ probe uh, concerning their autopilot driving system. We also have uh, Elon Musk taking over Twitter. So uh, another billionaire enters into the media market and uh, this, uh, the conspiracies I'm sure will flow around there. Like, you know, what's going on? They're doing it because of this or that. And um, so enjoy the holiday weekend. I hope you get more treats and tricks and uh, happy investing. And thank you very much for your time. Bye. Mm -hmm.